All right, are you ready for timeline? I am too. Now, I just drew this out on my, on my blackboard, and we're gonna just see how it goes with the blackboard today. So we are gonna start out with the Trans-Siberian Railroad. So I'm gonna put the TS, R, right here in the middle. And the Trans-Siberian Railroad was started in Moscow by Nicholas I. So I'm gonna put Nicholas the first. The first right here. And Nicholas the first was the Tsar of Russia. That's like a king. So think back, way, 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 way back to like Caesar. So can you hear that? Tsar, Caesar, like that. And um, so it was started by the Tsar of Russia, Nicholas the first. And what he did was he went up to his advisors and he said, I want a railroad that is bigger and better than the transcontinental railroad that was in the United States. And so his advisors thought about it and they thought, hmm, you're going to have to go all the way through Russia, which is 2,000 miles, and we don't really have the kind of industries that America has, so eh, row. we don't really have the workers for it, and you know, America was, we had those, they had those pesky Rocky Mountains, but they didn't have like an ocean in the middle. They had mainly the plains, so that was a little bit easier for them, and so sorry, sorry, um, we can't do it. And so Tsar went, whoa, you're all fired. And so he fired them all. And he hired another man and he said, I want a railroad that's bigger than the transcontinental railroad in the United States. And then the guy goes, yeah, sure, I'll do it for you. And so then the Tsar goes, and I have basically no money to pay for it. And the guy was like, yeah, yeah sure, I'll do that for you. And so he set out and he just started working away at it. And so let's put down here, what other things can we put down? We're gonna put down money and they didn't use dollars, we know that. Um, but we're gonna put down an X through our dollar sign saying they had no money. And we're gonna say like up here, we're gonna say it was 5772 miles. And that it went through a Lake Baikal. And many mountain ranges And, um, oopsie, and it was, it was huge. Okay, so this guy started out working on it, and he, since he had no money, and he, since um, with the United States, as you guys remember from just a little bit last year, they had deals with businesses. You guys remember that? But my goodness, I need something stronger. They had deals with businesses, and the deals were that when the businesses made a mile of railroad track, so they had to pay for the spikes and the railroads, um, the, the tracks, and they had to pay for the wooden things, and they had to make it really nice with, first they had to straighten out the land, then they had to build some um, gravel on top, then they put the wooden parts on, then they put the railroads on, then they spiked them, and then the railroad was done. And if they did that and made it look really nice, then for every mile that they did, they would get a lot of land and they could then sell this land, the companies, or they could use it for things. And so that was a tremendous deal and the US government didn't have to put any money into it. So it worked out well for both sides. Now, just as a little aside, the land they were giving away belonged to the Indians, but that didn't seem to matter at the time to the US government. So, excuse me. So. Um, so we have Nicholas, we've got no money, we've got 5772 miles, Lake Baikal, and we've got mountain ranges, and this one guy has to pretty much do this whole thing, and so he starts out working on it, and he has no employees to do it with, they don't have any companies like this to do it with and so he does the next best thing he gets prisoners now in russia if you say something against the czar or against the government you can be sent to siberia you can be sent to jail to a workhouse in siberia where it is extremely cold and so what he did was he said if you work on the railroad then you can have a day off for every day that you work and so the guys in siberia were like yeah let's do it because i do not want to be in, in in Siberia and I'm gonna have to work anyway 
So they start working and oh my goodness, you would not believe the things they have to overcome. So they have to go through mountain ranges, but guess what? The steam shovel wasn't available to them. And a steam shovel is like a front hoe. And so they had to do it with pickaxes and shovels through mountain ranges. Yeah, can you believe it? And then they had to go across rivers, but they had to build bridges and they didn't have the money for steel. So they had to build wooden bridges, which are never as safe as steel bridges. Well, most of the time. And then they had places where there was tons of wood, but it was all green. And they had places where there's no wood at all. So they had to improvise. And so they started getting cheap very quickly. Because remember, they had no money. And so what did they do? Oh, you can't see that, can you? No money. It's down there. So what they did was they built it very poorly. And they just kept working and working and working it. And then they had to go through, you won't believe this, they had to go through an ocean in Siberia. It is a lake, Lake Bacaw. It is so big that it is just like an ocean. And so they were like, oh my gosh, how are we going to go across? Lake Baikal. And, and we can't go across the mountain range because the mountain range is just too much digging through mountains. That's a lot of work. And so they decide to build a ferry. But you can't get the ferry there because it's landlocked. It's in the middle of nowhere. So they decided to build this ferry in pieces, bring it by train to the, to the lake, and then reassemble it and assemble some of it there. That's a lot of work. So they finally got the ferry done. So look right here, the ferry. They finally got the ferry done. And guess what? They were going to put the trains, they drove the trains, they rode the trains onto the ferry. And then the ferry was going to bring the trains across to the other side of the lake. But they didn't factor in the fact that the lake has its own ecosystem in the middle of it. They only looked from the sides because it's a big, big, big lake. And so, oh my goodness, it had like tsunamis in the middle. It had huge storms in the middle of the lake. And so the ferry couldn't cross with the trains on. So after two years, they had to ditch the ferry and they had to go through the mountains. So, so much work. So they finally got through, but right before they got through to the other side, with their train, King, or Tsar Nicholas I died in a train wreck. So I'm gonna put a train right there. So the poor guy dies in a train wreck. And his son, Tsar Nicholas II, where are we gonna put Nick the second? Let's put him right here. Nick two. Nicholas II takes over and he makes this huge, ginormous party when this Trans-Siberian Railroad finally opens and it makes it all the way to the Pacific Ocean. It's a very long train ride. The problem is he made such a big commotion about it that Japan was like, hmm, I think we'll go to war against Russia because this was a time when people just went to war against each other. And so they started attacking Russia on its far, 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 far east coast. And Moscow had to send all kinds of troops. And of course, they had to use the Trans-Siberian Railroad. But what did we learn just a few seconds ago? We learned that it was built very, very poorly. And so guess what? They had a lot of derailments and explosions. And so what should we put? Um, we should put poorly, poorly constructed. So I put poorly constructed. And so it would blow up very often. It was a disaster for getting um, people, troops, and, um, and equipment to um, the, the, the east part of Moscow. And so eventually, because Russia was so big and Japan is fairly small, Russia won that war. And it wasn't until the Soviets came in that they finished up the Transcontinental Railroad, or the Trans-Siberian Railroad. They made it two tracks instead of one so people could be going and coming at the same time. And they made it nice and straight and perfect, or nicer. And so that is basically your card on the Trans-Siberian Railroad. And so the things that I put in are Trans-Siberian Railroad. 5,772 miles. Um, it was an ocean, a huge, huge, huge lake in the middle of it that um, they had to go through with pickaxes and shovels. So maybe you guys could put pickaxes or shovels down here. That would be a cool thing to put here. 
axes and shovels to remember that they used pickaxes and shovels down there. So that is the Trans-Siberian Railroad. Oh, and you definitely, definitely, definitely have to link it to the Transcontinental Railroad because that's what gave the czar the idea. So that's the Transcontinental Railroad. See you in a minute.